Our scene opens with our three wonderful and talented actors seated officiously on stage, hands clasped in an attitude of hopefulness. Suddenly, the calmness of our setting is disrupted as they find themselves aboard a modern-day spaceship. How's our vector heading? Vector strong and oblique. Navigation is on target. Well done, team. Set a course for home. Success is ours. There's a small blip on the event horizon, sir. Oh? Any identification? Appears to be a power star. Sir, the nav systems indicate a massive round orb surrounded by spectral forces of some kind. But we should try to maneuver away from it. It's not our duty to investigate. I want to go home. Sir, the power star has fired a phase burst in our direction. Impact imminent in three, two, one. We're hit, sir! Damage assessment! Damage assessment! All systems are failing! We're doomed! Sir, I think we're being pulled toward the power star by some kind of attraction beam! Damn! There's no doubt. We are done! Let me say it. It has been a real honor serving with all of you. Whatever befalls our fate, our so-called power star, I'll never forget your bravery, your loyalty, your love. We won't forget you either, Colonel. Semper Galacticus! Semper Galacticus! Before the ship is absorbed into the star, we find ourselves in the dusty office of the famous private eye, Hammett Hairnet. He is sitting at his desk with his pretty secretary. There was a soft knock on the door, and I knew immediately that trouble was about to enter. She walked in with all that seductive charm of schoolgirl gone bad. His dame had games up to there and figured that out in all the right ways. Hi, I am. Been a long time. Are you still in business? Yes, he is. Uh, do you have an appointment? And there she was. Some dames are always around when a guy gets too comfy. So, what is it this time? Cam, I need a favor. I've gotten myself into a little mess with a broken nose boys, and they want cash now. Can you take them out for old times? Mr. Hairnet does not do hit jobs. He's a legit PI. She's right, though. I investigate. I don't take out the trash. There's 10G in it for you, <laughs> and my special affections, if you know what I mean. In that case, I know I'm going to regret this, but... Just as quickly, the scene changes, and they find themselves inside a rickety stagecoach galloping across the high plains. The Wells Fargo wagon is a-coming into town. <laughs> And where might you be headed, Charmin gentlemen? Come quite fall, ma'am. Say, what's kicking up all that dust on that there plane? Lordy be, such a ruckus. Ladies, I do believe that that ruckus is a tribe of angry indigenous people coming to stop the coach from crossing their territorial tribal burial mounds. Land of Goshen, how do we defend ourselves? We don't have a gun. I'm afeard that I shall meet our maker on this fine day. Bless your sweetheart. Land sakes. How do I hide my beautiful hair from those heathens? How do I protect my precious virginity? Ma'am, we appear to be in a dire situation. Sacrifices may need to be made. I fear we may be in the wrong here and have needs to make amends. I heard tell that these natives capture women and take them as wives. I'm not the a wife to nary a one. I'll try to protect you both on my honor as a southern gentleman and a defender of virtue. Just then, in the nick of time, a flight of F-15 fighter jets approach from the other side and ironically fire Tomahawk missiles into the savage horde. We're safe! Thank the Lord! In an instant, our troop finds itself on a deserted street in Laredo's Wild West. You got like your wish, black-hearted Theodore. I ain't never shot a man, but today is my lucky day. Prepare to die, you varmint. We're with you, brave hero. Stand firm. Oh, 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 Miss Ellie, I do love that hero. I can't watch it. I just hate. Don't you worry, Matt, sweetie. He has the whole town behind him. The righteous will always prevail. For your black-hearted deeds and evil demeanor, I hereby invoke the hero's code and challenge you to defend yourself. By my honor, I judge your lack, and I will sentence you to the bitter end. He's so eloquent, so dashing, so daring. That man... He's what makes the West great. Slap leather, Theodore. Oh, no, my hero! That was a damn shame. He didn't have a chance. He 
she didn't have a gun. There's a sound overhead unlike any they have ever heard. What is that horrible noise? Sounds like dragons. Dragon? What's a dragon? Mythical flying creatures that breathe fire. Very dangerous. They're coming for us? I'm afraid so. What we need is a fantasy warrior woman who can control these beasts. Would either of you be willing to be the mother of dragons? You know, thorn of swords and all that? Nope, not me. I'm not a fan of otherworldly fantasy and all that rot. They usually treat women pretty badly, or they make them dress in ridiculous outfits. Is that from Harry Potter? No. So, no one here knows any old Valerian? Mm, well, once again, we are surely doomed. Uh, narrator, a little help here? Fine. How about this? Our beautiful trio finds themselves transitioned to a popular nude beach. They undress. They what? I'm not undressing. Not for this mess. You've gone too far, narrator. I think you've lost it. I'm done. I can't do this. I'm, I'm out. out. Me too. The sweet them. sound of a gentle breeze softly rustles the leaves of the nearby sycamore tree. We hear the faint trickle of a pristine stream in the distance and the small splash of a koi fish feeding on dragonflies. The call of the red-winged blackbird in a full hackberry bush harmonizes with the mezzo forte stylings of a brown bullfrog in heat. Ah, nature. Well, call me an adrenaline junkie, but I miss the action. I'm back. I oh. If I have to get naked, I'll do it. But only if it's for the art. I'm not getting naked, but I do want to stay here. Can we negotiate? Fine. Our simple meat puppets are now at the Globe Theater, on stage in Elizabethan England. Forsooth, mine sight orbs doth dine thine past, might that our future were so inclined that simple nature would burst forth in both nurture and allow poor puppetry to thus recline. Alas, poor knowledge of luster past, entwined within lost structure desire, the swain beseech the bosom bare to dance forthwith within the fourth court. What reverly yonder Freemason churls that once defended the honor of the lass to see the golden hidden curls turn yon puppet into yon ass? And yet, knowest not I what tragedy we play, who hath the scroll of words in this memory? Indeed, tis truth, we should be thrice through our words are not writ and not therein true. But we poor players upon this stage at once idiotic and contrived to speak. Tis not the usual practice of our current age. To stand upon the boards and croak, not creep. Then, in the blink of an eye, our intrepid trio find themselves on a train. No, on a train, on top. Whoa, how did we get here? Heck, why did we get up here? This train is moving awfully fast. Are we chasing someone? I'm slipping, I'm slipping, I'm gonna fall. Oh, why did we come up here? This is dangerous. Oh, the wind is so strong, I can hardly keep my eyes open. Look ahead, a tunnel. We're headed for a tunnel. Will we fit? Duck down. We'll never fit. We better pray, help us. The scene again changes, and our cast find themselves lined up against a bullet-riddled wall facing the firing squad. They smoke cigarettes. Um, I don't smoke. Me neither. Nasty habit. You should pantomime. It's a good prop, and it looks cool when we toss the butts away to the audience. <laughs> well, in that case, I guess I could do it. Me too. Facing certain death, our brave trio stands straight, erect, and proud. Courageous to the very end as the guns fire. And then the audience erupts in applause, and our excellent cast bows and curtsies in thanksgiving. The end. <laughs>